know, this the trap of social media and technology, it's so enticing. Recently, I heard something that these social media companies, these giants who are earning billions and billions of pounds from us clicking on these smartphones, they invest so much money in making them addictive. You know, when you take drugs, you're on a high, there is a chemical released in your brain called dopamine. It makes you feel good. That's why people do drugs, because it makes them feel good. Well, those people who have researched into this, they will tell you that when you hear your phone ping, the sound of that message, it releases dopamine in your brain. And the spike of that dopamine is very, very similar to the spike of dopamine which is released when someone takes cocaine. This is not me saying this, go and research this yourself. And we'll see. These social media sites, these mobile phones, they are deliberately designed and engineered to be addictive. They want us to be addicted to them. It's estimated that in this country, we are spending out of seven days of the week, if you add up all the minutes, approximately 24 hours in a week, we are spending on our phones. One day of the week, we're losing each week on this mobile phone. And we don't realize these things, especially to the youngsters, I say. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you intelligence. He has made you his deputy on the earth. He has given you the capacity to look beyond these things, to be bigger than these things. You know, if you look at the achievements of the people, the nations, and our brothers and sisters in the Ummah who came before us, how much achievement they, they made in, in the world. What are we doing? No. We're looking for funny videos on YouTube. Why are they trying to take control of our lives? Let's not allow these so-called smartphones to rule our lives and take over our lives. And it's harder, uh, said. it's easier said than done. It's not easy. Um, but, you know, start off small. Let me give you some practical tips. Start off small. For example, when you come to the masjid, don't bring your phone. I haven't got my phone with me. I deliberately don't bring it into the masjid. You're here to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do you need your mobile phone? What did people do before they invented mobile phones? People lived. They lived more fulfilling lives than us. So one simple practical step. When you come to the masjid, leave your phone at home. Lock it away. Leave it uh, you know, out of sight wherever. Leave it at home. When you go to bed, don't leave your phone in the same room that you sleep in. And these, these are things that does not just me saying this. If you look at psychologists who are advising people about technology addiction and things like this, they say that you should not look at the screen 30 minutes before you go to sleep because of the blue light in the screen. It disrupts your sleeping pattern. So one simple easy step you can do before you go to sleep, put your phone in the other room. In fact, what you should do, and those of you, the elders, I advise you, in your home, have a, have a box for your mobile phone. Have a time, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, everyone's phones go in the box, including yours. Or what you can do, what I'm trying to do personally for myself is I'm, I've got myself on this cheap phone that doesn't have internet and things, it just receives calls. I have a smartphone as well, I need it for certain things. But what I'm trying to do is to keep that away, leave it at home when I'm out and about, take the small one with me, divert the calls from that to that. If it's important, someone will reach you. Your mobile phone is not your life. And if it is, you've got something to worry about. That's my message to you.